Hi there, this is Gabriel Bismuth, and today I'm gonna play for you the solo by Stas Smith on a jazz standard called Undecided. Don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel. This was my interpretation of the solo by Steph Smith on Undecided from his uh, 1960 album called Cat on a Hot Fiddle. As on my previous videos, you'll find a link to download the transcription of this solo in the description of the video. Steph Smith is one of my favorite jazz violinists, if not my favorite, but for this video I decided not to do a full analysis of the solo like I did on my previous videos, but rather a shorter video in which you'll find the solo played at the original tempo, which you just heard, and then I'll make a brief presentation of the style of the Smith. And at the end of the video, you'll hear the solo played at a slower tempo. This will result in a change of format, which will hopefully allow me to do more videos. So since I know that you guys love the transcriptions, I'll try to do one or two more transcription videos about Steph Smith and then I'll try to do one more general video in which I'll go deeper into details about the style of Steph Smith. And obviously I'll try to do that for other jazz musicians as well. In the meantime, if you have a specific question to ask me about this video, feel free to write me an email and I'll try to answer to your question. So you can find my email address in the description of this video. And also, if you want to go deeper into details, if you want me to give you some advice or some tips on how to improve, if you want me to give you some feedback on your playing, then we can schedule a private lesson, so feel free to write me about that as well. In the description of this video, you'll also find a link to download the backing track of Undecided. Uh, there are actually two backing tracks that you can download. The first one is the one I used in this video. I made it with uh, Arial Pro. Uh, in this backing track, I tried to capture the spirit of the original recording, that is the chord changes uh, which happen uh, from uh, one chorus to another in the original recording, and also the drum breaks. So you can use this backing track if you want to practice the solo by Stuff Smith. And the other backing track is a more normal one uh, that you can use to practice your improvisation. And obviously, each backing track is also available to download in a slower version. Now, let me say a few words about Steph Smith. 
He was an American jazz violinist uh, who started his career in the 1920s, uh, pretty much like uh, Stefan Grappelli. He was also a very good singer, uh, one of the pioneers of uh, scat singing, and also a very good composer and songwriter. Uh, he wrote hits that were to become standards like uh, Use a Viper or Eyes a Muggin, which was actually also covered by Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli. The reason I chose to do this uh, transcription uh, of Undecided uh, is because uh, it was one of the first solo that I heard by Steve Smith and what really amazed me when I first heard this was his uh, incredible ability to swing. I mean, uh, his phrasing is so tight. If you try to play along the original recording, you'll notice how difficult this is to be uh, as tight as he was. And also sometimes when you try to play tight, well, you don't swing that much because you lose your smoothness, you're not as relaxed as you'd like to be because you're trying to play a little bit like a robot or something. But uh, in the case of Steph Smith, uh, the guy was as smooth and relaxed as you can be. And to me, he was uh, the uh, hardest swinging jazz violinist of all time and probably one of the hardest swinging jazz musicians of all time. To me, he's the epitome of swing. His violin playing gives the word swing all its meaning. If you try to put your bow on the strings like this, well, it's pretty much like a swing, right? So this means that violin must have been made to swing. But obviously, it's not that easy to swing like Steph Smith did. And also, like Stefan Grappelli, he had a very unique sound. So, uh, how did he do that? Well, unfortunately, he's not here anymore to tell us. But one thing I noticed uh, by listening carefully to his recordings is that his bow was really always uh, very close to the strings. Uh, very close to the strings, even when it's not uh, supposed to be on the strings. For instance, uh, if you're at the tip of the bow and uh, you want to do a downstroke, so you need to go to the, to the heel, well, a classical violinist would do like this, right? Well, Steph Smith, he did pretty much like this. So that's why you hear all those uh, dirty noises, all those open string noises. Uh, which I try to include uh, accurately on the, my transcription. So uh, this um, allowed him to have a very good uh, drive of his right hand, uh, which gave him this uh, very earthy kind of playing, which is really important to swing. Um, another thing I noticed uh, is that uh, his playing sounds uh, sometimes sounds a little bit funky, like when he does like this. You know, this sounds a little bit funky to me. And also he has this uh, left hand pizzicato, uh, which, uh, um, which he uses like, uh, he wants to, to sound a little bit like a cymbal crash, like, uh, like he wants to add even more rhythm to his playing. And one last thing is his uh, very special vibrato. Well, actually it's not really a vibrato, it's more like a slide of the finger on the string, like this, so... Like this. So actually you can hear this uh, very special vibrato, you can hear it more if you listen to his balance, which I really recommend you do. Another very important thing uh, are his uh, bow strokes. I really advise you to think about uh, this because um, they're actually um, not that easy to do, they're actually quite difficult to do. And to me, this shows that uh, the guy really was improvising. I mean, there's no way you can think of such bowings if you're not improvising. In the case of Steph Smith, uh, it's really his uh, inner passion which he had when he improvised, which made him do all those difficult bowings, all those incredible tricks uh, with his bow. So this really shows what improvisation can bring uh, to your playing, uh, what it makes you do that you cannot do if you're not improvising. Obviously, there are things, uh, his, uh, things that he does, like his trademark gimmicks, which are not really improvised, which he does in this solo, and which he also often plays in other recordings. 
but we'll come to that later on when I do my more general video about the style of Sir Smith. Right, so, now I'll try to play it slow so you can figure out things that weren't that obvious in the fast version. Here you go. That's it. I hope you'll have as much fun as I did playing this solo. Keep on liking my videos, keep on commenting, I'm always really happy to read all your comments. And if you're not already a subscriber, well, you know what to do, you just have to click on the subscribe button. Bye! See you!